Sleeping through the night seems like an important milestone to reach for everyone's sake. Not there yet? I'm going to tell you how to get your little one to sleep through the night in five simple steps. So stay tuned because every single step is crucial to your success. Some say five or six consecutive hours constitute sleeping through the night, but let's face it, we're all aiming for those 11 to 12 hours ultimately, aren't we? Sure, six hours undisturbed is bliss in the early weeks when you get it, but that usually just comes from a baby's hunger satisfaction being sustained for that length of time. It's not so much to do with skill. Practice is what it takes to reach the 11 to 12 hour sleep through nights, and here's how. Step one, routine. Start with a good bedtime routine using the same steps in the same order every evening, making for a sleep conducive environment. Not too many changes of location, just bathroom and bedroom, milk, story, and down for sleep. The same way every time, no matter who's doing bedtime with your baby, so he or she knows that, that routine and knows what to expect, no variations. No screens or stimulating input from multiple family members, just a one-on-one -on -one calm routine after saying goodnight to the others. Step two, naps. Making sure your little one doesn't get overtired is key to an undisturbed night, so you need to make sure they're getting their nap quota for the day every day. Check out my episode on naps to learn how to get naps on track. Early nights or extra power naps are a good way to top up an overtired little one, but just don't fall for that old fashioned myth about tiring a child out so they'll sleep well at night. It will actually have the opposite effect. Step three, sleep onset. How your little one falls asleep plays a vital part in your little one sleeping through the night. If you have to do something to or for them in order for them to fall to sleep, you'll need to do something to or for them in order for them to get back to sleep when they wake or stir in the night. We all wake in the night to some degree. It's how we survive, but when we know how to settle to sleep, then we automatically put ourselves back to sleep knitting our sleep cycles together and barely even being aware of it. Babies and young children who haven't yet mastered settling to sleep at the onset of sleep won't be able to get themselves back off to sleep between sleep cycles, meaning your assistance will be required through the night. Deeper sleep tends to take place in the first half of the night, so you may see more disturbances during the second half of the night until your little one masters their self-settling and resettling. Check out my episode from last week on this so you can learn how to teach your little one to self-settle. So step four is response. Your response to night wakings is another major key player in this process. You need to know how you're going to respond to any night wakings and it works best if it's the same as how you left your baby at the onset of sleep at bedtime. So if you stayed by your little one's side until they fell asleep, you'll need to respond by sitting there again while they go back to sleep. If you shush from the crack of the door at bedtime, this is your response to night wakings. Getting clear on this in advance and making sure all parents or caregivers are on the same page is really important. Step five, you know it, consistency. If you respond in different ways at different times, your little one won't know what to expect and could hold out for a different outcome to happen. You must be consistent in how you respond to night wakings, no matter who responds or what time it is. The response needs to be the same every time. If your baby still feeds at night, there are ways to factor that in while still maintaining a consistent response to night wakings. So be sure to learn about that in my night feeding episode. The common mistake we see is parents responding consistently through the night until about 5 a.m. and then giving up and bringing their little ones into their bed with them. This sends mixed messages and your little one won't understand why it's okay then and not okay at any other time in the night. So it's actually unfair to do this. Being consistent shows a steady hand effect from you and your little one will actually feel safer and more secure knowing that he or she can trust you and rely on you to deliver the same response each and every time, even if they don't particularly like it. So there you have five steps to sleeping through the night. Routine, naps, sleep on set, response, consistency.
If you need help figuring this all out, reach out to us at sleepnanny.co.uk and we'd be delighted to help you because you and your family need healthy sleep for a happy life. Leave us your comments over on the blog and until next time, stay happy, keep healthy and sleep soundly. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using hashtag the sleep nanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.